Today, we are lacking social inclusion. We cannot rely on governments alone to provide social infrastructure and safety nets. We must mobilize individuals who, in entrepreneurial and innovative ways, tackle the big problems we are faced with now and in the future. The Schwab Foundation gives the social entrepreneurs a network to exchange expertise and experiences. It gives them a global presence and visibility. Social entrepreneurs show all the other leaders who are part of the forum that social responsibility is more important than just making money. Having access to the World Economic Forum for any social entrepreneur gives us a greater chance to scale our impact. Thousands of initiatives on a local level that improve the lives of millions of people. Let's welcome Hilde Schwab. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Schwab Foundation. I clearly remember back in 1998 that social entrepreneurship was a new concept to us, combining market discipline and business practices with a social mission, mission and deep commitment to those less fortunate. This idea captured our imagination, and so Klaus and I decided to create and fund the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship in order to find and give a platform to social entrepreneurs at World Economic Forum events. 350 social entrepreneurs were honored over the last 20 years, and most importantly, those Schwab Fellows formed their own community of experience exchange and strong professional and personal relations. They are a global family. They are united by their passion, creativity, persistence, and optimism that a more just and equitable world is possible. We just concluded a two-day social entrepreneur summit with 150 of our community members and the 2018 awardees that will be honored today. Many of them will participate in the program of this Sustainable Impact Development Summit until tomorrow evening and contribute their expertise and experience. I would like to associate Dr. Precious Moloi Motsepe with us with this ceremony, applauding her steadfast leadership and support of this special community. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you the 2018 Social Entrepreneurs of the Year, and I invite each awardee to join me on stage when I call their name. Brukti Tigabo. WizKids provides early childhood education to 15 million Ethiopian children through TV and radio programs in seven local languages. Their award-winning shows, Chehai Loves Learning and Involve Me, improve literacy, numeracy, and health indicators. They teach gender equality, encourage scientific curiosity. <coughs> they are integrated into 450 schools nationwide. Fatuma Adan, Horn of Africa Development Initiative, or HODI, works in one of the world's toughest regions, the drought-prone Marsabit region of northern Kenya. Fatuma is the first woman to receive a law degree from her region, and she used her education to return to Marsabit and change cultural practices across 300 villages throughout the region. HODI's traditional elders for peace program enlists leaders to resolve tribal conflicts peacefully, and their Breaking the Silence program offers adolescent girls a school-based safe space to heal from sexual violence. Mike Quinn, Zona. <laughs> the 
Zona is a fintech social enterprise combining the drive of young entrepreneurs, 70% 70 of them women, and the power of technology to bring financial services to underserved communities in sub-Saharan Africa. Since launching in 2009, Zona has an active consumer base of 2 million consumers and 3,000 agents outlets in Zambia and Malawi. And they have processed $2 billion in transactions. Muhammad Amjad Sakib. Akubat is pioneering a new approach to microfinance that is both financially sustainable and compatible with Islamic finance. Through its core program of interest-free microfinance, Akubat has dispersed around $600 million in loans amongst the poor that have been utilized to <coughs> launch or expand small businesses. It also operates services for transgendered people health clinics, low-cost schools, and a tuition-free university. <laughs> David Young. <laughs> Green Monday aims to tackle climate change, global food insecurity, and public health issues. In Hong Kong, Green Monday has a chain of vegetarian-only retail stores and a coalition of schools, catering companies and restaurant chains that have adopted its plant-based meal plans. Green Monday's concept of a once-a-week vegetarian meal is successfully changing dietary habits and the movement has already spread to 30 countries. Urvashi Shani. <laughs> Study Hall Education Foundation, or CHEF, runs a network of nine types of schools and programs that cater to girls, disabled children, rural youth, and children outside of India's public school system. CHEF has worked with more than 900 government schools and trained 5,000 government teachers reaching an estimated 500,000 children. All of the girls who attend CHEF schools learn that, to get, that they have rights. They go on to higher education, and over 50% of CHEF graduates are employed. <laughs> Tulin Akin. That's the wrong one. Tabit has pioneered an SMS-based system in Turkey that is free and accessible via any basic mobile phone. Tabit's services revolutionized how small-scale farmers receive vital agricultural information, including weather forecasts, market prices, and financing options. In 2017, 50% of Turkey's 3 million rural farmers used Tabit's mobile-based services. <laughs> Bas van Abel. Fairphone drives change in the electronics industry by making smartphones in a way that puts social and environmental values first. It has implemented a long-lasting modular design to limit electronic waste. It sources conflict-free materials. It provides its workers with good working conditions and it supports recycling efforts to move closer to a circular economy. To date, 160,000 Fairphones have been sold. Valdesi Ferreira. <laughs> 
FEBAC is a federation of 48 non-profit prisons across five Brazilian states that offer a more humane and more cost-effective alternative to the state-run prison system. FBAC's proven methodology consistently produces a recidivism rate of 20 to 25 percent compared to the national average of 85 percent. And its model has been replicated in 23 countries. <laughs> Sasha Chanov and Amy Slaughter. Refuge Point has directly helped over 54,000 refugees access resettlement in another country and has contributed to the resettlement of 1.2 million refugees since the organization's inception. Refuge Point started the Refugee Self-Reliance Initiative, a global community in, of NGOs, foundations, governments and international organizations that promotes effective refuge self-reliance models and they aim to reach five million refugees in five years. Zach Rosenberg. <laughs> SPP shrinks the time and cost between a natural disaster and recovery by ensuring the most vulnerable communities and households have access to the information and support they need before and after disaster hits. SPP rebuilds, rebuilds destroyed homes in low-income neighborhoods within an average of 60 days at just 40% of the costs of market rate contractors. The organization played a pivotal role shaping statewide response efforts after the hurricanes in Texas and Florida last year. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, I might like to ask all the social entrepreneurs to come up on stage. Please join me in congratulating all of them for their tremendous efforts. And please, please get to know them, learn about their models, and determine how you can support their work. And Berge, if you allow me uh, my 30 seconds at the end, uh, the sustainable development goals are wonderful and everybody aspires to um, fulfill them. But uh, if you listen to the social entrepreneurs and read their models, I think they are already doing everything what the goals are about. So thank you and this concludes our award ceremony.